Thank you, uh, Senator, and I uh, thank you all for being here. And I, I didn't get to hear all the testimony, but I did get to hear quite a bit. I had some other questions, but here's the one thing that I haven't heard. I haven't heard one person mention the increased weight of an electric vehicle. The president has said that in, by 2030, we are going to have 50% of our cars are going to be electric vehicles. So I just did some brief stuff on my phone here. Uh, a GMC Hummer EV weighs 9,000 pounds. The battery itself weighs 2,900. 100 pounds. A gas uh, GMC Sierra, uh, which is, a I guess, comparable to a Hummer, if anything's comparable to a Hummer, weighs 6,000 pounds. There's a study out there that says baseline uh, fatality possibility increases 47% for every 1,000 pounds added to a car. So we can't regulate or we can't legislate if we reach these goals, which are doubtful, but going in that direction, if we're looking at heavier vehicles, I mean, this has been brought to my attention by our own West Virginia DOT. Can the guardrails withstand the impacts? Um, Dr. Zant said that uh, when you talked about fatalities, it's mass versus velocity. People aren't slowing down. And if you've been in an electric car, uh, those things get, get up and go pretty daggone fast. What are we going to do about this? And does anybody have suggestions? And I'll just start with um, uh, Ms. Chase. Thank you for the question, Senator. Um, I do think it is a question that we have to address collectively as we move forward. Um, at ITS America, our North Star is safety. And while we appreciate the um, significant climate impacts of transportation, uh, and we understand that we need to move to a more sustainable transportation system, we need to be prioritizing safety. Um, as I mentioned in my uh, opening remarks and my written testimony, we, need, we, we believe we need to move to a more proactive approach. And to me, part of that means preventing crashes before they even happen, as opposed to mitigating the impact. Obviously, we need to do both, but if we take an approach that is proactive to prevent the crash from happening, um, that is where ITS America believes we can leverage our technology tools in the best possible way. Mr. Nelson. Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, at AAA, we support consumer choice and what kind of vehicle people choose to drive. Yeah, I'm not really debating EVs versus Understood. gas. I'm saying yep. these are heavier vehicles that are going to result in more fatalities, and we're talking about safety. Understood. But you're speaking our language because we've been giving a lot of thought to the potential safety implications of a uh, proliferating passenger vehicle fleet involving EVs. And you highlighted issues about uh, stopping distance, how quickly these vehicles can reach higher speeds, uh, potential degradation of the built infrastructure. Just think of a parking garage full of EVs. Right. Well, one, yeah, the, yeah. the collapse in New York City, yeah. Right. And then just size and weight issues of so, but, an well, ICE I'm not vehicle. Any solutions here to right. how we're going to? Well, I don't think we have this. solutions yet because we don't have uh, a high uh, penetration of EVs in the U.S. fleet. But certainly, there, you know, we should be approaching this as a first do no harm kind of a, a policy move. And we haven't seen at AAA much effort into thinking through how to proactively address these uh, implications on our infrastructure, but also on safety. We've seen right. no action. I mean, I just think it would be smart to be talking about this right now in terms of these types of vehicles, because if any of the goals are actually met, uh, this is going to be a large part of our fleet. Uh, doctor, do you have a, a comment? Yes, thank you, Senator. Mm -hmm. um, yes, as I've spoken about in my um, earlier remarks, kinetic energy is a product of mass right. times velocity right. squared. And so the mass is a critical factor, but also the speed at, these, at which mm -hmm. these vehicles can travel. And so a lot of the tools we have in our existing tool belt are really to address the speed side of the equation. Okay. Um, we have, with all of our infrastructure investment, opportunities for a lot of the built environment to address speed management. Uh, to create safe and appropriate speeds for different vehicle types in different contexts. Um, we also have some technologies on um, the vehicular side as well related to uh, intelligent speed assistance and intelligent speed um, supportive devices. So I, I, I'm not being confrontational here. I'm just clarifying on myself. So that means you would have governors in your, in your specific vehicle that wouldn't let you go a certain mileage uh, or a certain speed. I mean, I know there's a, there have been bills out there that say trucks shouldn't go more than what actual, the semis shouldn't go more than 70 miles per hour if that's, if that's the 
uh, posted speed limit. Is that, is that what you're talking about there when you talk about technology? There are, there are technologies that exist on um, large truck fleets, yes, but right. also what we're seeing in other countries is intelli intelligent speed adaptation systems. So they can, is, provide, what does that mean? they can provide warnings to drivers when okay. they're okay. over the speed, or they can actually address um, the pressure that needs to be applied to accelerate a vehicle to give sort of a physical feedback to the driver so that they don't continue to accelerate over the rate of, of the posted speed. So they're doing that now in Europe? They are. Okay. And Mr. AV over there, I mean, West Virginia has a great AV law that we passed. Uh, but I wonder uh, what you see the future, and I might be out of time, so I actually am. Thank you, because <laughs> we have a vote. I better go. Thank you.